Hey, it's Devin Burke, the founder of Sleep Science Academy and your coaching guide to getting your best night's rest. Let's talk about five simple steps to increase sleep quality. Now, let me make a distinction. I'm not talking about quantity of sleep, the amount of sleep. I'm talking about the quality of the sleep that you already get. Now, this is really important distinction to make because often people get confused. They might have insomnia and they say, oh, well, I'm following all the steps, uh, the sleep hygiene steps and the things that I read on the internet and heard on, you know, even some of your videos, Devin, and I'm, they're not, it's nothing, it's, it's not working. Well, that's because you're doing things to help your sleep quality, but not necessarily address your issue, which is insomnia. So I just want to throw that out there before we get into this, this video, but let's talk about how to maximize the hours that you spend in bed. So first and foremost, we have to talk about the cold because there's two things that control our sleep and that is temperature and light. And so it's been found through many scientific studies that a cold room optimizes quality of sleep, specifically the important stage of sleep called Delta deep sleep, which happens in the first quarter of the night. So some ways that you can make cold a part of your lifestyle is you could do cold exposure, cold showers. You could get a um, temperature regulating mattress. You can get a chili pad. You can get a bed jet. You could, there's a lot of different levers you could pull. You could take a hot shower right before you go into bed because the body's temperature needs to drop two to three degrees Fahrenheit to induce sleep. There's so many things you can do and it can be so simple as just turning down your thermostat an hour before you get in bed so that it gets to that optimal temperature, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which might be cold for some people, but that really is the optimal temperature to then allow the body to get into these deeper stages of rest, which then help your body do what it knows how to do, which is really repair and recover in these deeper stages. So the second thing is you want to make sure that your room is dark and how you can do this is some blackout shades. You can get blinds. You can wear an eye mask. The one that I personally love that is in my bag. Actually I have two of them and they're in uh, my travel bag as well as my, my work bag. And it's the Manta mask. It's a blackout Manta mask, great company. Uh, but you don't have to go invest in the Manta mask. You can just get a eye mask. And the reason why this is important is because light comes into our eyes and it creates a whole cascade of hormone responses. And we want our environment to be like a cave. So caves are dark and they're also cold. So you know, remove any lights, electronics, all the things. This is, I mean, a lot of times people know this stuff, but they don't follow through on it. It really does make a difference. When we're talking about quality sleep. So if you care about the quality of your sleep, if you want to get better sleep, deeper sleep, then make sure that your bedroom is dark. Then the next thing is you want to make sure that it's quiet. And this is really important. If you don't feel safe in your bedroom because you're hearing noises and alarms and you're hearing, you know, I don't know anything, animals outside your, you know, your home that create, you know, the sense of tension, like somebody's coming to get you, or you're going to get eaten or something like that. It's not going to be good for your sleep. It's a form of stress. So if you live in a city, you can get a white noise machine. You can, um, you know, there's, there's, you can play some soft music, um, to sort of create a environment that otherwise would be filled with more of these harsher types of noises that would keep you up. But ideally you just have a completely silent room and silence today is hard, unfortunately to come by. Um, so we have to be very intentional about creating it. So even having some, uh, noise deadening, uh, objects in your bedroom, like some, you know, you could put things on the wall or you could have plants, things that kind of absorb sound would be a good idea because the quieter your bedroom is, the better off it is for your sleep quality. The next thing is food. This is very, very easy to not listen to. And sometimes I'll be honest, I have a hard time following this one. It's no food three hours before bed. And the reason, because we don't want our bodies digesting food when they're trying to digest the cancer cells, which is one of the features uh, or functions, I should say, of getting high quality sleep is the body it is, is in there and it's removing these cells from our body. We don't want our energy being diverted to the stomach to digest the hamburger that you just ate. Um, so going to bed in a fasted state, you can train your body to do this. I hear people say, oh, I have to have a full stomach in order to sleep. It's not true. You trained yourself to have a full stomach and then told yourself the story that you need to have a full stomach to sleep. And it's just not a true 
true, you know, it's a true story. You can literally train yourself just like you would go to the gym and train yourself for a marathon. You can train yourself to go to bed on an empty stomach. And it's actually the optimal way to create the best quality sleep. So if you watch any of my other trainings or videos, you know, you know, the three, two, one sleep three is three hours stands for three hours before bed, no food. And this is a big one. It's not just what you eat. It's also when you eat it, that makes the difference when we're talking about sleep. So again, if you want higher quality sleep, implement the three hour rule where you are not eating, you're cutting that time off so that you can get the most quality sleep. And when I talk about quality, I'm talking about deep sleep and REM sleep. The last thing here, and this is the biggest thing that most people overlook, and I love to talk about this and because it, it's, you know, it's, it's very subtle and tricky for people, but really just understanding how your body holds on to stress and how to release those stress patterns throughout the day makes a massive difference between, you know, getting a great night of quality sleep or having a fitful night of poor sleep, you know, understanding and adapting what we refer to as a stress blueprint, which is how you think about stress, how you handle stress, um, how you mitigate stress throughout the day, physically and mentally is all really important. But I, you know, it's just, it's about releasing stress. So sometimes not all stress is bad. We need stress. Stress can be helpful for us to move forward our lives. And, but if we don't release that pressure valve, we take that into the night and then it gets in the way of quality sleep. And then we wake up fatigued, we wake up a little foggy, we wake up a little groggy, and then we experience more stress because we're not making good decisions. We're not able to, to really show up the way that we know we could. And so having a practice, I'm a huge believer in mindfulness practices, 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day, or a breathing practice, which is extremely powerful in the moment for you know changing the chemistry, the body's chemistry from a fight or flight chemistry to a rest and digest chemistry, or getting outside in nature, petting a puppy, hugging your partner. There's so many ways to release stress throughout the day. You just want to be intentional about doing it. So these are five simple strategies, five simple steps to increase the quality of your sleep. If you're a new subscriber here, um, or if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you're new here, like, share this video. Uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you know, share it with somebody that you needs to hear it. And most importantly, take action on these five simple steps. They are simple, not rocket science. Maybe some of them you heard before, but you're not practicing. So pick one or two, or maybe just all of them and notice how that increases the quality of your sleep. And if you're not tracking your sleep, I highly encourage you to track your sleep so you can see how these five simple steps actually do make a difference when we're talking about quality of sleep. All right. Until next time, sleep well, and I'll talk to you soon.